forward to. All right. Okay. Well, you guys are here. I'm glad you're here, <laughs> but you guys are here to, to learn how to leverage podcasts for greater influence. It's a secret to skyrocketing your influence authority and brand. Here's the thing though. I've been doing this a couple times a month and I want to show you guys today a little bit more than just why you want to leverage podcasts. I want to show you guys, and I'm actually going to show you how you can use podcasts to monetize on LinkedIn specifically, because it's a really great platform. Um, it's, it's my favorite platform. It's not just my favorite platform to post on. Um, it's also my favorite platform to, to meet people on, to get in front of those hard to reach CEOs, all, all of that good stuff. So I'm going to show you guys how you can use your podcast and then how that can translate into monetizing using the power of LinkedIn. So it's not here in the title, but I'm going to cover it. All right. So I appreciate you guys joining me today and we're going to show you how to leverage podcasts so you can discover all these untapped potential podcast guessing um, opportunities and transferring your business and personal brand with the power of podcast because it does do some amazing things for you. So we're going to talk about why podcasts are the ultimate game changer, unlocking your message and irresistible story, identifying perfect fit podcasts for maximum impact, crafting the irresistible pitch to land dream interviews, becoming a podcast interview rock star, scaling your success with podcast guesting and your exclusive life-changing offer from me. Um, and the monetizing is going to come from that scaling section. We're going to do it right after. So um, this works great for agency owners, coaches, consultants, speakers, authors, entrepreneurs, service-based business owners, service as a solution SaaS founder. So, um, and we're finding this to work amazing with anyone who's in the fractional community, which I know we have a lot of fractionals on this call too. So hopefully you guys can hear me okay. If I'm not loud enough, just let me know. That means I need to turn up my mic a little bit. All right. So here's the big reason why you guys want to get on more podcasts. This is the big one because they're a game changer for you. I mean, one of the hardest things right now, I think for a lot of um, small business owners is visibility. And I've seen so many different um examples of in the last couple of weeks of why visibility is so important, why having um, platforms where you have your information on what you do is so important, why having a website is so important. I think it was last year, everyone's like, do we even need a website anymore? And I can, and I said last year and I'll say it again this year. I'm like, yes, yes, you do. That is your physical evidence. So because everyone's coming online, we don't have brick and mortars online. What do we have? Our physical evidence is our website. It's also our social media platforms. It legitimizes us. And so that's one of the key things. So when you have those pieces and then you throw in the fact that you are getting interviewed by podcast, you're getting chosen, you're one of the chosen ones, then it legitimizes you even more. Um, otherwise, you have a lot of people asking, well, who are you? I've never heard of you. And that's pretty safe to say for about 99.9% .9 of the people online. Like I've never heard of you. I'm like, well, that would, yeah, of course not. It'd be really hard to do, right? Um, so what does it also do? It also builds that unshakable authority in your niche. You guys can see why. Um, it helps you network like a pro and build powerful connections. So there's something else that happens when you are a podcast guest is that you get to network with the host <laughs> and you get to build that rapport, which comes through on the podcast uh, episode. So the audience hears it. So it's just great to network. I mean, you never know what happens from just doing the podcast guesting with a host. Um, but on top of that, you get in front of the audience so you can generate those high quality leads, right? And then when you're done, you can become that go-to expert in your industry when you use it correctly. And I'll show you guys how to do that on LinkedIn. Um, you will stand out amongst your, comp your competitors because if you're getting on podcasts, your competitors are not, it is one thing that increases your, not just your visibility, but your authority. So, so that's the really great thing too for podcasts and it gets you in front of new audiences. So this is the other thing that's really um, been fun with podcast and it may be something that has kind of gone a little bit unnoticed the last couple of years, but it's still very relevant. So podcasts and listening to podcasts has, it went up during 2020, right? 
And then it went down a little bit during 2021, but it's actually making people listening to podcasts is becoming back to a regular thing like it was in 2020. Funny enough, right? Um, and that's because there's so much value. There's so much value in it. And people are not just, people are really busy. We have a lot going on. A lot of people are feeling like, oh man, I still got to catch up. I feel like I have to catch up. So in 2020, um, you know, being inside all the time, 2022 is a catch up year and 2023 is proving to be something where people feel like they need to catch up on their knowledge base. So when it comes to podcasts, people are listening for information. They're doing a little more listening than they are reading. So that's the other great thing is that podcasts can get you in front of a new audience that you otherwise wouldn't be able to reach. So as you guys can tell, I'm a fan of podcasts, right? So who am I? Who am I to even tell you guys about this, right? Well, I'm Danielle Fitzpatrick Clark. I'm a digital disruptor um, because I help you disrupt your niche. And I do that with messaging. I do that with helping you with your personal brand, your company brand. And I like to, this is the disruption piece. I really like to get people to either come in or disrupt them to move out because I don't want anyone coming in who's not a good fit. So that message precision, that positioning, the branding is really meant to bring in the right ideal clients and push out the ones that aren't like your tire kicker, your tire kickers. And the ones that are coming in, we're magnetizing them in so that they're like, oh my God, what are, where have you been all my life? Those are the premium clients that you guys want to attract. And you do want them saying that. And I promise you, they will say that. They've said it to me like, where have you been all my life? It's almost... It's almost, I feel kind of bad. I'm like, I'm sorry. I guess I needed to be on more podcasts or I needed to be out there more. And I wasn't. And my apologies, I'll do better. Um, because I don't want people to feel like, where have you been all my life? I want to get them right when they haven't had those bad experiences. But you know what? I can only do so much, right? One person can only do so much. So what else do I do? Well, I work with brands. I work with brands. Here's some of the big brands that I've worked with. We do digital marketing. We do influencer marketing. We do PR. Um, and we also, I am myself a podcast host. For, for a couple different podcasts, I've been running summits for years. I think I think we're almost up. My, maybe my team have run 300 summits. We've either produced or hosted them. Most of them produce, of course. There's no way I ran 300, uh, 300 summits myself online. Um, but I'm also an influencer, so I know how to get I know how to get my message out there to the masses. So there's an example down there that actually ended up going much bigger than just that. That was just, I got the print screen and then I was like, oh, I should probably got the newest one and I didn't. Um, but that one ended up reaching almost half a million. And I run workshops just like this all the time because I do love educating people. My parents are educators. So of course I do it my own way in the digital space. Um, and again, I'm a podcast host, but I also do PR and podcast placement. So I actually, and I haven't told anyone this, but I actually have access to over 20,000 podcast hosts and podcasts that you know, not all of them interview, but a majority of them do. So highly, highly connected. We'll just say that. So, and I've been on hundreds of podcasts and produce podcasts and summits. Um, and summits, were, producing and hosting summits is actually my first claim to fame. That's what I, that's what I started doing in digital marketing. So um, all of that means that I really know the power of podcasting and I know what the audience and hosts are looking for in terms of guests. I know exactly what they're looking for in terms of guests. Here's the other, here's the kicker too, guys. I know exactly what hosts who run summits are looking for. And I know exactly what hosts who run live events are looking for when it comes to speakers. So because I've done all of them, I've been the host and I am the host. And so, and I talk to the host. And so I, and I ask them the same questions because we like to trade, trade, we trade secrets. So like, how did you get that full? How did you get that full? how did you get that speaker? And so everybody has the same complaint or the same ask when it comes to their speakers. It's, um, but if you haven't hosted, you may not know it. So I'm going to tell you guys. All right. But here's one thing that is really, 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 really important. You guys need to identify your unique edge, aka the thing that sets you apart. That's the golden ticket. And why is that? <clears throat> well, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys an example. As a host, as a podcast host, I have people coming in. They looked really good on paper. And so when they come in, when they, and there was actually, I will say, 
everybody I brought in in January <laughs> to interview possibly for one of our podcasts, every single one of them, I would ask them this question. Okay, what, what sets what you do apart? And the answers were, I've heard them before. Like the, the same answer within their niche, I had heard it all before. And which means my audience had heard it all before. So when I went and asked them that next question, okay, I'm like, okay, but I have heard this before. So let's come up, let's see if we can come up with a unique, um, a unique edge for you so that I can market you better. So I can showcase you better because if I can do that, you actually have a better chance of monetizing from a podcast episode that I host with you. And it's true. One of the things that I've been told by my guests over and over and over again, it's like, thank you for taking the time to really pull out my unique message and what I do that's really special. I got a client off of that. So I'm one of the very few podcast hosts where people will come on my podcast, they will get a client. Yes, I have a good audience, but it's a good match too. I bring in people where they can match what the audience needs. So really good podcast hosts and the ones that you guys want to get on anyway, because everything else is a waste of time. I'm going to be real. Everything else is a waste of time. Um, they are going to be able to showcase you, but make it easy for them. Make it so much, know this stuff before you go on or get interviewed or do a pre-qualification interview. It will help them because you want it to be like a no brainer for them to say yes. Plus, if you're doing the networking too, and I know I'm going to get to this and I'm skipping ahead, um, but if you do the networking correctly during the talk that you have with the podcast host, you don't want to just impress the audience. You want to impress the podcast host because there can also be massive opportunities there too. So this is how you guys do it with that unique edge. You craft a magnetic core message, weave an unforgettable, compelling story, position yourself as the expert, your audience craves, speak directly to your audience's hearts and minds, hearts and minds, hearts and minds. One more time, hearts and minds. Everyone's trying to speak to the mind. I'm like, no, you gotta speak to their heart. That's why we do storytelling. That's why we have a compelling story. All right. You guys are like, how do we do that? Well, if there's any questions at the end, don't worry, we can answer those too. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to move through this a little quicker. Um, so we have some time. You guys may want to ask me. And if you can't be here, you can ask them in the chat beforehand. That's one of the benefits of coming on live. Um, but all of this sounds great, right? But it doesn't really matter unless you find the perfect niche podcast. Trust me, I've been on the duds. <laughs> you guys want to find the niche ones. Okay, so this is how you want. This is how you guys are going to find your rich niche podcast. Um, it just takes a little more digging. It takes a little more digging. So a lot of people. Like I need to get on more podcasts. So they go and look for podcasts that have similar keywords. What I want you guys to do, I, I want to flip that a little bit. I want you guys to start thinking about getting on podcasts differently because your time is precious. Their time is precious. And start doing different things when it comes to these podcasts. Start analyzing the audience demographics and look for look for the demographics that are similar, if not exactly like your ideal clients. So that's what you guys want to do. You want to analyze. You want to leverage podcast rankings for high impact visibility. So you also want to look for podcast rankings. Which ones are more visible? And you guys can do that. You can Google um, podcast rankings and metrics. You can just Google that and see all these different applications that will come up to help you do that. Some of them are free too, so you can test them out. Um, you want to align your message for ultimate success. So once you know the audience demographic, and you position yourself with the, the correct podcast that have your ideal audiences, then you can also easily align your message with what that audience would be looking for anyway. Then you want to seize these un, the, the untapped collaboration opportunities. What does that mean? What does untapped collaboration opportunities mean? Well, there's a couple different ways to look at this. Um, one of those collaboration opportunities is to collaborate with the host. You don't know what's going to come out of that. Um, the other thing that you guys can do for collaboration opportunities is that you guys could actually, instead of just doing a podcast, you could go into a host and say, I would love to do the podcast. Ever thought about doing like a co-webinar here on LinkedIn 
or something like that so that you guys are taking that message further plus that builds up your relationship with that host and the host's audience right so does everybody just click and buy these days no they don't so the more that you're in front of that audience and the more that you're in front of that audience with a trusted advisor meaning the host the more opportunity you're going to get to monetize from that podcast so you guys can always take it another step, but you have to really tap into those collaboration opportunities. So those are a couple of examples. Okay, first thing I want you guys to do before you do anything else, I know you guys are probably looking up the apps to check the metrics on their rankings. Before you do that, before you do that, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to go ahead and first do your research. Do your research on Align Podcasts and create a list of 100, 100 Align Podcasts. You can, that's what you need to do. So you want to go and look at the demographics. The aligned part with the podcast means that they have the aligned audience. So you want to first, first and foremost, find those podcasts that have the same audience as your ideal clients. That's going to be your best bet. Um, then you can check the rankings if you want, but create that list of a hundred. It's going to take you longer than like five minutes. It's going to take, it's going to take a couple days. So you guys, you guys may be getting like, okay, do I really have to do a hundred? You don't have to do 100. I, minimum, bare minimum, do 20. Do 20. Um, but 100 is a really good gauge because you're going to want to learn how to pitch these guys and you're going to want to know what your success rate and 100 is, you know, 10 times 10. Um, 100 is usually what I do with podcasts and also with my funnels. I like to run 100 people through my funnels first before I'll say, okay, we need to make some changes. It's a good gauge. That's a lot. That's a lot of people, but it's not too many people. Um, so because I can always put another 100 through. I mean, we can put 100 people through on our funnel on day one. We can put a new 100 people through day two. Not everybody feels like that, but that's a whole other webinar that I'll have to show you guys on how to get leads like that every single day. Um, then once you have those once you have those podcasts, then you guys can start pitching. And we're going to go into like, how do I pitch? How do I pitch? You got to craft. You got to craft one. I do say craft. It is a little meticulous here with your pitch. You want it to be irresistible to land those dream podcasts. So you got your list. Now you want to land the, you want to land the top, the top, you got to have a top 10. I know you guys are gonna have a top 10. You want to get all of them. I get it. Even one of them would be really great, but you got to have that message. So here's, here's what you need again. Yeah. You got to do your homework. See, I told you guys, my parents were educators. Um, you guys gotta do homework. Here's the mistake that people make. They send a pitch. It is a cut and paste of the same pitch over and over and over again. It's not customized, it's not personalized. Big mistake. You want to personalize your pitch. That's what you really wanna do. You also, because you're doing your homework, you're probably gonna know this, you wanna find the unique gaps to cover both what the podcast host would want, so what the podcast host is interested in, and also what their audience is interested in. So here's why it's so essential for you guys to find that aligned audience, because you're gonna already know if it's your ideal clients, you're gonna already have a pretty good idea of what they wanna hear. It can be sometimes different than what the podcast host wants to hear sometimes. Sometimes it can be, um, not all the time. It's usually, it's usually pretty close. Um, but you can actually, if you do your homework and you go and you're like, I really want to get on this podcast and you start looking over the past episodes they have done and you see that they're missing a key conversation that you could bring to the table that the audience would really love and the host would really love, that's part of your pitch. You also want to show credibility, right? So even if you guys have never been on a podcast before, credibility you can show. Um, your work history is credibility. So one of the podcasts that I love listening to is um, it, it's it's a it's a Stanford it's a Stanford podcast. It's all about communication. So the person that runs it is a professor there, and he brings in other professors at Stanford University. So what's the credibility? They work at Stanford, probably graduated from there or some other Ivy League. But that's the credibility piece. So if you that's just one piece too, guys. So if you have like an Ivy League degree, that's credible. Um, if you guys have worked with big companies before and this is how the big companies do it and you're bringing it um, down to bite-sized pieces for 
an audience of small business owners, that's credibility, right? So just really think about what makes you a credible resource. I mean, years of experience, yeah. Outcomes that you've gotten for clients, that makes you credible too. Just make sure you guys can prove it, right? And that you have your physical evidence online, which again, um, if you guys are coming in late, physical evidence online, website, social media platforms that showcase you are who you say you are, that you're a real human, you're not a bot. That's going to become even more important, by the way. Um, so show credibility, create a genuine connection. Why do you want to talk to that podcast host? What can you do to create a genuine connection over email? This is tough. I get it. Um, but here's the shortcut. You find something in common. Simple. It's really simple. You just do your homework. You go and look at their LinkedIn profile. You go look at their face. You, you, you stalk them. You, yeah, I call this creepy cute stalking because you're doing it because you want to get to know them. Um, you're not doing it to be, to be really, really, really creepy. Um, but you want to create a connection with them. So it's okay. Go and stalk them online and see some things that they're up to. And what is it that resonates with you? If they have a dog and you have a dog, awesome. Hey, I love that picture of your dog on Instagram. Um, that kind of stuff. Like really things that you would, you know, you would use in a networking, like an in-person networking atmosphere, just talking to them. We don't have to overthink it too much. It's usually just, and I get it. Some people are like, yeah, it's easy for you to yell. Not so easy for me. Um, I usually will just find something on their profile that just stands out. And maybe, maybe I don't have anything to add to it, but I'm curious. And so I can even bring that to the conversation within an email setting and just say, hey, I just saw that you did um, that you did this article on amphibians or something like that. I thought that was really cool. And I, I had a question too. Uh, just stuff like that. It's usually like one sentence asking them, um, relating to them, but make sure you have that within your email. And then you can also use this other thing in your pitch. If you have a large audience or you have access to a large audience where you can help them promote their podcast more, that helps. That helps, especially if you're new to podcasting, um, but you do have an audience that can help. You can leverage your own audience to help them promote. Say, hey, I don't want to leave you just to promote yourself. I want to help you promote. I've used that tactic with some of my clients when I placed them. It was one of the best tactics that we've ever used because she had a huge following, huge following. She had like 25,000 on her email list. We made sure that we put that in her pitch. Boy, did they get follow-ups. Um, and she got on tons of podcasts. It was actually pretty easy to place her on top podcasts that way. And here's the thing. Success is always in the follow-up. People get busy. So you want to make sure you're staying top of mind and you keep just asking. Don't bug the crap out of them. <laughs> you know, be, you know, you can be fun about it and make sure that you're giving them a few days before you ask about it. When it comes to pitching, I'd say a oh, week in between when you last send an email is pretty good. That's pretty good. You want to do that. And that's minimum, not the next day. Okay. So once you're on a, sh once, okay, so let's just say you nail the pitch, you get into the podcast. What next? Well, you, you got to prepare like a champion, right? This is not just like, I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> I mean, when you've done a few of them and you feel pretty confident, you know what you're doing, then you can wing it. If you're new to it, you don't want to wing it. You want to prepare. So you want to hone that message. If you don't have your message honed, you want to hone your message and make sure that it's aligned with that audience, right? What you told the host you were going to talk about, make sure that happens. That's something that I've actually had a podcast guest come on. We talked about what we were going to, what we, what the title was and what we were going to discuss. They come on and talk about something different. <laughs> so um, that podcast episode did not air. I will say it did not air. So make sure that you do that. And you also want to create a list of key talking points. Now you can have this for yourself. Um, it doesn't hurt to send it over to the host, especially if the host asks for it, then you want to have those ready. Understand and develop your unique story. So here's the thing about that, that Stanford podcast I was telling you guys about. What was it about? Is about communications. The one that I listened to recently was all about storytelling and why there's, and the neuroscience behind storytelling. Like why does storytelling really connect more with people than if you're just giving information? It is 
fascinating to find out that stories makes it easier to recall information about somebody. It makes you memorable. And so you really do want to have a unique story. You want to, you want to bring that in, right? Does it have to be your own story? No, it doesn't. It could be like, I'm dropping you guys little stories about what not to do <laughs> as a podcast host um, and what happens. But these are little things that you guys are going to remember. Like, I don't want to be in that situation, but you could actually tell a story um, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be yours. It could be one that you heard as long as it relates to what you're discussing, but you want to have that too, because it will make you memorable. Um, you want to prepare for potential questions. So questions that the host could have, if you have it as like a podcast where it's also a hybrid type of podcast and you do a live stream, people may come on and ask questions or the host may even have questions from the audience that pre he prepared ahead of time or she prepared ahead of time. Um, and practice makes perfect. Prepare your talk, right? Practice it. Practice it with a friend, a colleague. Um, you know, the way that I did it is I, I, I just I just went on podcasts. That's how I practiced. That's how I got better. I, I just went on as many as I could. That was just how I wanted to do it because I was really, really, really nervous, right? Did not like speaking online. Did not like being on video. It took a lot to overcome. And so my the way that I did it was I'm like, I'm just gonna go on as many of these things as possible. And that that eventually um, made it a lot easier for me to get on to get on and do podcasts and to do live streams and all that good stuff. And here's the other thing. You want to think about and create next steps for audience members right? You want to make sure that you're sending them somewhere. And a good host is going to ask you, where can people connect with you and learn more about what you do? Do you, oh, and you prepared something special. So you may actually have um, something special to give them. So pro tip on this one, make sure this also includes something the host would love. <laughs> yeah, you always, I always think of the host too. They like presents. Hosts love to get presents from people. Think about when you are going to like a dinner party or a Christmas party that somebody is hosting. I mean, you always bring them something, right? Like a bottle of wine or something. Thank you for hosting. And the host's like, oh, thank you. I so appreciate it. We love presents. Hosts love presents. Just saying. Okay. So now, how do you guys leverage it? I mean, it's not, what good is it if you guys aren't scaling, having the scaling effect with all this? Hopefully you guys can hear me. I think I just knocked this. I think we're good. All right, so we want to scale, right? Okay. So you wanna have the everything effect. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Yep. Okay, okay, good. Or something, it was messing up. All right, so you guys wanna have that everywhere effect what is what is the everywhere effect the way so okay it's it's a made up it's made up i made it up it's my effect I, and i like to call it the everywhere effect and the everywhere effect is that you are everywhere so if you're on a podcast you are doing your due diligence and you're putting it out there every single platform you can think of or that you have or that you've developed you want to have that effect so that audience members, the podcast host audience, your audience, your incoming audience um, is saying, wow, so-and-so is everywhere. I can't get away from them. So you all, and what does that do? Keeps you top of mind. It gets people curious. So how do you do this? You promote, you feature, you repurpose, you track, and you reach out, right? Okay. So what is we promote it? We promote the episode on social media. We we promote it on all of our social media platforms. Um, we feature. So we want to feature the episode like on your website and your blogs. Um, if you guys are on LinkedIn, you can do LinkedIn newsletters and LinkedIn articles. You can feature the podcast within those and a link back to the podcast too. Um, you can add the podcast appearance to your media kit or your portfolio. You can also put that on website. So if you guys have been to any websites where it has a media page, being on podcasts is a great 
piece of your media kit on your website. You can put that there. You Sometimes you can embed it just depending on um, what the host will send you. But if anything, you guys can have a link to it in um, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, all those places. And that really does help um, if people are looking to bring you on as a speaker. They're going to be looking for that. Hosts are going to be looking for that. Um, you also can repurpose that content for an unstoppable reach, right? And why is it unstoppable? Because when you repurpose it and you take chunks out of a podcast episode, you have a lot of content, which makes it, and you can, you can release that all the time. So it never has to stop if you've got enough of these. And the other thing is, is that you guys really want to track using game-changing me metrics for continuous improvement. Most of your social media um, platforms will have metrics built in. They will. You also want to have metrics, especially if you're putting the podcast episode up on your blog. You want to have like Google Analytics. You want to have Facebook Pixels, all those things. There's other metrics and applications that you can use, but those are the main ones. You want to have that on the website so that, and you want to make sure that it's throughout the website. So you can see, you can see when you put that podcast episode um, in a blog or on a page, even if it links out to the podcast host website, you can at least see how many people are landing on that and moving forward. You can also see how many people are coming in to your blog as well. So you got to have, you got to have those metrics and you want to craft a killer outreach strategy. What does that mean, right, for monetizing this? So now the outreach strategy, we're going to talk about this in LinkedIn too, but I'm also going to show you guys how to monetize. So how do we do it? You can use it for optimizing your profile and optimizing is really on LinkedIn, it's keywords, it's keywords and keyword phrases. So optimizing it, um, making it keyword friendly, SEO friendly, and also um, really easy to navigate. You can make your profile really easy to navigate. You also want to repurpose posts and use your podcast episodes on LinkedIn for conversation starters. I'll give you guys a couple of examples of that. Use it for social selling, publicity, and to move people into your programs. So I think I'm going to have to show you guys this though. Let me show you how. All right. Let me just stop the share for a second. We're going to keep the recording going and pull it up. And then we'll come back to that one. Okay. Right. So here's my LinkedIn profile. So it is a highly optimized profile, meaning that I have keywords all throughout this. And when it comes to prof LinkedIn profile optimization, guys, more is more. <laughs> more is more because LinkedIn itself is a search engine. It is really doing a good job competing with Google. So if you, and I'll just use this as an example. If you were to put one of the titles of your articles that you have on LinkedIn, and that had a lot of people commenting on it. You put that in Google and LinkedIn did its job. Chances are that LinkedIn article may come to the top as long as it's the only article with that name online. And sometimes it is. So it is amazing what LinkedIn is doing when it comes to um, SEO and being searchable. They are really doing a fantastic job. It's really exciting. So keywords and phrases are really important. Um, you more is more. So like the more content that you have, the more, and just don't like, you know, do what people used to do with SEO and put like all the cities that they, they can work in, right? <laughs> Use that as part of it. That stuff doesn't work anymore. Well, people still do it, but Google doesn't like it. So you don't want to do that here. It, it's gotta, it's gotta be, it's gotta flow well, right? So what are people really looking for? they're looking the top third. So what does that mean? They usually will look at the about section and up when they first go to your profile. So make sure that you have SEO and keywords um, with SEO and the keywords working. Also, if you guys haven't, you wanna go ahead and turn on that creator mode. So you can see that mine's on. Um, when you go to yours, look under that resource section, it'll say creator mode. When you click on this, it'll take you here. 
and they'll usually be like a switch, like right there where you can turn it on and off. Obviously, mine's already done, so, um, but it gives you a lot of different things. It gives you LinkedIn Live, so you can live stream through through party. You can do audio events on LinkedIn. You can do newsletters on LinkedIn, and then you can have a follow link. So instead of having a connect button right on your profile when people come in, you instead have a follow, and then they have to dig for the connect button. This is really good to get more followers. Um, here's where the keywords can be really important. Profile topics. What is it that you talk about? This is the this is what the, this will display at the top and it'll show your audience what you talk most about. I talk about digital marketing, LinkedIn marketing, influencer marketing, LinkedIn lead generation, social media marketing tips. That's what I do. I talk about that a lot. I really talk about more than that, but they only gave me five. They're only giving everybody five. Um, but that's that right there alone that will help you with your keywords that'll help you optimize um so you want to turn that on you want to have a featured section as well where it's featuring podcast episodes here's how you can really use it not just to optimize but this is really good publicity guys so if you have a podcast episode um you got graphics for it you can put this right here as a link and this can link out to the podcast episode um, but this stuff helps. So you want to make sure you put that in your featured section. That's one way to really use it to monetize, right? So if people see that, not only does it really um, increase your um, authority and influence, but it also gives people a little bit of listening material to see what you're up to. So if they're still curious, then they're going to move forward and click on that. Um, you know, here's the activity section. You guys, if you just recently, um, if you were just recently launched your podcast episode was, then you want to make sure that you are posting immediately because when they launch it, um, it's the first day that most people will download. So it, it, it's like this first day, most downloads, second day, some more downloads, third day, a lot less and going down fourth day, you may have some. So you're looking, you've got like four days to really capitalize on the momentum that that episode has because of the release and just how people will subscribe and how they will listen. So the most downloads are definitely on the first day. Um, second day, pretty good. Third day, it starts going down substantially. Fourth day, it's pretty much non-existent. So just know that that's how it works. Um, of course, there's outliers. Majority wise, that's what it looks like. So you want to make sure that you are capitalizing on that momentum and you're posting immediately, which will go into your activity section. So anybody that comes in is going to see that. Um, you can also do this, which is really cool, is that in your about section, and I don't think I have it here, but let's just say that you really feel like you are looking to monetize and to get that publicity from um, a podcast, then you can actually say, um, you can say something about here are some of the podcasts that I've been on those topics. So you could actually put it down here um, in the about section. If you feel like people need pre-education too in order to um, move forward with you, this is a really good place to do that. And you can drop those links. They can go and look at it. People do look at this stuff. It's crazy how much they look at it actually. Um, and here's the other thing is that you can actually link. You can actually link stuff. Um, like podcast episodes within your experience section. So if you don't have, well, if you're like, well, don't necessarily want to put it in because I have an agency influence builder, don't necessarily want to put it in the, the agency stuff, but maybe you just have another experience that is speaker. <laughs> you could have one, see, because I have a host and producer one of light at the end of the funnel. You could also just say speaker um, and then you could, take the links from those podcasts and put it right underneath there. Isn't that great? So it could be in your experience section. The other section it could be in, it's down here a little bit, publications. Could be in publications. You guys can put it in there. Um, I think that's the only other one I have it in, but yeah. So I have a newsletter. I have a virtual summit here. And the other, the best thing about this guys in the publication is that you can even tag, you can even tag other people that were in the publications. You can tag the host so you can get access to theirs, their um, audience that way. Um, but you can put it in publications. You can put links in there. We've got tons of publications. Um, so all those things. And, you know, here's, here's what I've been able to do. I've actually been able to use this and put, um, this one's on iHeartRadio. Some of my podcast interviews in here. So here, I'll just click on it and I'll show you guys the publication for this one. iHeartRadio, right? 
this is me on somebody somebody's podcast. No, this is light. This is light at the end of the funnel. This is one of those. So you can grab those and showcase that you were on iHeartRadio. Great. Been guess what that means? That means you've been featured on iHeart iHeartRadio. That's a that's a logo that you guys can use. You can use that. So um, yeah, here's one of the other publications. So I've actually published all these different episodes where I was on. So I featured that. You can do that right in your LinkedIn profile which is awesome, right? So I'm showing you guys really how you do it. So what does that do? Well, people are going in, a lot of people, if they meet you on LinkedIn, they're gonna go to your LinkedIn profile to find out how legit you are. Um, with a built up pro optimized profile like this, that has all the publicity and the pieces in it, you look fantastic. Chances are your competitors don't have it built out like this. The other thing is, is that when you're on the podcast and the host asks you, um, where can people reach you? You know where I send them? I send them here. I said, go check me out on LinkedIn. Put in Daniel, just search for Daniel Fitzpatrick Clark. I guarantee there's not another one. I'm the only one because I like my last names long. And the I'll come up. And then what do I have up here first? They can go and apply to work with me. <laughs> so there's an application piece right in there. And um, that's really easy to put in. You should be able to put the edit button, scroll down. And then you can put a link so I can put the link to the application and then the link text definitely put that text in because nothing looks worse than like a link right here um, but then it'll have that what I usually like to do is I like to whatever I put here for a link I like to put in my banner to like apply, so this is apply to see if you qualify for our placement services um, and then they can go in here and do it it just needs to match so you guys can see just how powerful this can be um, when it comes to monetizing, but this is how you're moving people along. Now, you can also use your podcast as um, conversation starters. So you can say, you know, let's just say that you run a podcast, the host has a LinkedIn group or a Facebook group, go into the, go into the group, right? You can actually start talking with people in the group saying, hey, I was just on this podcast. Did you, were you able to listen to it? Um, I was really excited about this part of our conversation with the host. And most people are like, no, I didn't. I'd love, do you have the link? Can I go and look at it? Oh, of course, that way, right? Um, just make sure that you're not just putting it out there for people who aren't asking for it. You see how I kind of move those conversations into people are asking me? Um, that's how you do it. You just, you find, you find where people already have that pre-education, meaning that if you go into a group that the host, the podcast host has, or in a place where um, people know who that podcast host is, you can use that. Like um, when you're talking to, audience members. So just get really like, you, you got to do your research on this too, guys. You There's so much out there. There's so much out there that people don't think of. I have a lot more tricks than that, but I wanted to show you guys the big ones when it came to LinkedIn and how easy it's actually to get all this stuff in. Is it easy to organize it? Uh, I don't know if easy is the word. Simple, yes. Time consuming, yes. Yes, it is. You need to, you need to take your time on it. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and just finish the last piece. I'm going to share screen one more time for you guys. Let me see. Just want to make sure that we're in the right one. Almost done here, guys. You guys have questions. Don't worry. We're going to get to them. Okay. So next one, please because it's not in percent. I'll do that real quick. Yes, please. There we go. All right. So by now we've covered everything. It went fast, yeah? So we talked about why podcasts are the ultimate game changer, how to unlock your message and irresistible story. I have a feeling people are going to have questions on that one, which is great because I love answering questions on that one. How to identify perfect fit podcasts for maximum impact, crafting the irresistible pitch to land the dream interviews, becoming a podcast interview rock star, scaling your success with podcast guesting. Showed you guys how to do that on LinkedIn specifically and how to monetize from there. So now you guys get your life changing offer. I don't think you guys can be surprised because I actually just showed it to you. So introducing your audio influence podcast guest placement program. We actually place people on podcasts, but not just any podcast. Award-winning podcasts, amazing podcasts, aligned podcasts. That's what you guys want. Um, so I get it, guys. I mean, I've been doing this for 16 years, digital marketing for 16 years, entrepreneur, 
for even longer because I'm a terrible employee. Um, <laughs> it just is what it is. I'm sure there's a lot of people that can resonate with that. Um, but you guys, it, you, you, you're busy. You, you know that you got to, you guys know by now, you got to build your brand and authority. It's really crucial to your success. You could be um, one of the foremost experts in your niche. Um, but if you're not highly sought after because you're not known, it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't. It's so sad too. I know so many amazing experts that are better than all their, I mean, they, the, there's no competition. Nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows who they are. It is a travesty, right? It is so sad. Um, so you guys know it is imperative that you have authority and branding. You've got to have it. You guys got to, and here's the other thing, because you're busy, you guys got to find the right platforms. You've got to find the right platforms to connect with your target audience. Otherwise, you're spinning your wheels. It can be time consuming. It can be frustrating. You don't feel like you're moving ahead anywhere. Um, it's also important that you develop relationships. So this is all about networking and in relationships, strategic partnerships. You want to develop those with podcast hosts. Um, and that can be really challenging. It can be really challenging, especially if you're not well connected in your niche, right? So if you're well connected in your niche, sometimes you can get referred and you're really, if you're really good, here's the other thing. If you're not connected in your niche and you start networking, you can be referred in, in rooms that you don't have to be in by other people. It's, it's much better time-wise too. Um, but it can be tough, right? So, but if you really want, if all you really want is to be seen and to be heard and to be appreciated, which is the human conditions, is what everybody wants, then imagine what could be possible here. So imagine what it could be like to be really seen, um, to instantly increase that visibility and reach by getting featured on high quality niche specific podcasts, right? I tell you what, it's really interesting. And I've seen this, Not there's not a lot of people that have had this experience too, but it's really amazing when you're, and by all means, like I'm not a celebrity at all. However, I am known in certain areas of the United States. I have been on stages. I've been on podcasts that are well known. And so it's been really cool to kind of go and like Atlanta's a really good, Atlanta's a good example. Um, it's really cool to be in Atlanta. I usually do family trips there. And once, only once though, because I do like to hide and I don't like people to see me. I have had somebody come up to me like, are you taking off as Patrick Clark? I'm like, yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> and so they'll, they'll say something like, I saw you on this stage or I saw you on your platform. I've been following you for years. It does happen. It feels really good. So that's like being seen. Now, could I have done that? If I wasn't on podcasts and see, no, <laughs> there's no way. And I do see people that get that same, they, they get that same um, as seen, right? People will come up to them in random places and like, I know who you are. And it feels really good. Um, it also feels really good to be heard, right? To be heard, to have what you're saying to get out there and land and to land with people like, I never would have thought of that way, that way. Wow. Especially when it's a host, it feels really good. You get that instant feedback when it's with a host, but to be heard for your thoughts, um, for your methodologies, for your knowledge, that can feel really good. And that is a huge confidence boost too. And an ego boost, I will admit. It's, it's a good for the ego too. Um, and then to be really appreciated. So when you get on podcast, that is, that is, someone showing you appreciation for what you do. It really is. Getting asked to be on a podcast is that. Um, you know, you can be appreciated, position yourself as an authority in your niche, and then you can attract those clients, those dream clients and those customers, and then fans, the fans that you get because they trust and value your expertise. So when you are on a podcast and you have amazing messaging and it lands, then you are a high value person to these audience members. They are going to follow you. They're going to ask you questions and that feels really good. And they do appreciate you. Otherwise they wouldn't waste their time following you. So bottom line, you guys, if by now, I hope you guys know it, it makes the most sense to be a guest on a line podcast. It's the only way really to gain the exposure that you need as the expert in your niche for your ideal clients. So I do place people. I place not everybody. I can't place everybody. Sometimes you guys need to do a couple things before you're ready, um, but you guys can apply. So that's the application button. Um, 
you guys want to pull out your phone, you can. And there you are. I will open this up for, I'll open this up for questions. I, I have a feeling that people are going to ask some questions. So I will leave this up. You guys can go ahead if you want. And actually, you know what? I will pull this in. I'll pull this link into the chat. Um, for those of you that are watching the replay, because we will have a replay, don't worry. The button below, it will have this link. You can click on it and go apply. So let me go ahead and stop share. And I'm going to stop the recording.